you know what? I normally cover some pretty serious topics on this channel. And so today, I think I'm going to talk about the riots, you know, tongue-in-cheek, in going on in Miami. Because uh, this is kind of a funny topic for me. But it's also something that I think is a good opportunity um, uh, to talk about the past year. Because I do think that there's something deeper to this than just people going nuts in Miami. Um, now, spring break is always pretty wild. And obviously, there's going to be a concentration in the uh, the wild behavior in Florida this year because Florida is the most open state, largely, the open, especially when it comes to spring break locations. I mean, what do you have for spring break? You have Virginia Beach, Myrtle Beach, and then all the Florida beaches. I assume they normally would have spring break in California, too. But who knows? Maybe we're getting uh, West Coast people here, too. And where would be the... Uh, you know, probably the most popular beach for people to go to on spring break in Florida. It's probably going to be Miami because that's the city that people, you know, know the most. Um, Miami Beach is not actually in the city of Miami. For those of you who don't really kind of know the area, um, you know, it's a, it's a barrier island. Also, a lot of people, you know, usually go to Fort Lauderdale uh, for spring break. I'm surprised that I'm not hearing as much about them in the news. Um... I guess maybe things are a little more under control there, and that's why I wouldn't have ever heard about that. But, I mean, they made a... What was the name of the movie? I think it was called Where the Boys Are. It was a Hollywood movie from the 60s, uh, early 60s, about spring break, and that was set in Fort Lauderdale. But over here on the West Coast, things seem to have been a bit more... Um, relaxed. Uh, the, I mean, the most exciting thing uh, that's happened over here was uh, in Clearwater, uh, there was a guy who, you know, got arrested on the beach and, uh, you know, some of the, some one of his buddies decided to let him out of the police car. And then, you know, he made a short run for it before the police tackled him. Um, but I mean, that's nothing compared to what's going on in Miami. So I don't really understand necessarily because people, you know, the narrative I'm hearing on this Miami story is that, well, people are coming from all around the country and they're, they've been cooped up because a lot of them are from jurisdictions where they couldn't do anything, where stuff is closed. Um, and so they're coming to Florida because Florida has the reputation of being the, you know, the open, uh, the open state, which, you know, is well deserved. And they want to come here and party. And it's like, well, if that's the case, why are things only so crazy in Miami? I mean, I'm in a nominally coastal town in Florida, as most people in Florida are. Um, you know, pretty much you have Orlando uh, that's inland. But other than that, you know, your big your big population centers are all going to be along the coast here. Uh, and I haven't seen noticed anything crazy. Now, then again, I'm not one of these rich people who lives, uh, you know, a few miles from, you know, from the beach. Uh, you, you really you're getting into a very you're, you're getting into the seven figure range if you're anywhere close to the beach. But still, I have not, I haven't heard anything locally going on about spring breakers, you know, jumping up on police cars and twerking. Um, so this seems to be a Miami-specific issue, and I, I don't quite understand why that is. Ma you know, again, maybe it's like I said in the beginning. Um, Miami is the number one destination in Florida for a lot of these people, especially if you're young. You know, it's, some, it's a more exciting place uh, than, say... Clearwater, I would think, although a lot of people go to Clearwater Beach, it would seem. It's definitely going to be more exciting, I would think, than Apollo Beach. I think that's all old people. But still, even if it is the most extreme in Miami, we should be seeing this, um, this same phenomenon occurring in maybe smaller doses throughout the rest of the state and in other parts of the country, maybe even. Um, if this truly is, you know, it should be spring breakers everywhere. Uh, wherever they, wherever the spring breakers are congregating, you would expect them to be more rowdy than usual if they've been cooped up. Especially since if, they, if these um, uh, these uh, college students, I won't really call them kids, although they they act very childish. Um, these college students, if they are taking all online classes, then they're not even, you know, they don't have college parties to go to. Uh, they don't have these, uh, you know, these frat houses uh, to occupy. Uh, and so this leads me to conclude, if it's only really going on in Miami to this extent, that this is something, that this is a uh, sort of a group psychology that um, developed independently uh, and uniquely in Miami over the course of this spring break and had to have 
had some origin. There must be some common thread here because it doesn't exist everywhere, and there's and this same trend did not develop everywhere else. Now, what that is, I don't know. Perhaps the people going to Miami are from uh, a particular part of the country, and there's a maybe in Miami there's a, a particularly high concentration of spring breakers from a certain part of the country. Now, let's say I don't know. Let's say that uh, Miami, which, you know, is those of us in Florida kind of consider Miami to be a little slice of New York, <laughs> uh, just based on, you know, at least the, the, the white people over there, uh, your non-Hispanic types. Um, they, they tend to be more New Yorkers uh, than anything. Maybe you have something similar going on with the Spring Breakers to where uh, amongst the Spring Breakers, there's a high concentration of New Yorkers who, of course, have been uh, one of the most uh, victimized people in the country when it comes to these lockdowns, um, you know, and not just people from New York City, but New York State and, you know, other parts of the Northeast, I would imagine, are, are just as uh, draconian. I mean, we've heard plenty of terrible stories out of Jersey, just absolutely horrible. Um, and... If that were the case, that in Miami, more so than any other city in Florida, um, you're getting a high concentration of uh, people from New York, New Jersey, um, who are really, really pent up more than anybody else in the country, then I guess I could kind of understand why we're seeing this disparate impact there. And maybe the uh, uh, Miami Beach is just getting the focus of the media coverage and maybe the uh, you know the rest of south florida uh let's say palm beach fort lauderdale maybe it's still you know is pretty rowdy there too which again would also be um destinations for people in the northeast south florida is a big destination uh for northeastern people in the united states in general and so maybe we do see sort of a um a progression and you can see outside of miami beach itself you there are these other pockets of a very rowdy behavior that you wouldn't necessarily see on the West Coast, because again, the people who go uh, to vacation on the West Coast tend to not be people from the Northeast as much as you know the rest of the country. It just happens to be you know your orientation. I mean, if you're going to drive down to Florida and you're in the Northeast, it's very easy to jump on I-95. And where does that take you? That takes you to Miami. It doesn't take you to Clearwater or you know a place like uh, Panama City. Um, I mean, if you think about how far west you have to drive. Um, to get to Panama City, you know, why would you drive there if you're coming from uh, the Northeast when you could just as easily drive to Miami, just keep going straight south, and that's a more exciting destination than Panama City. And so I would think between the two, you're going to get a lot of more of these Northeasterners going to South Florida. So that's that's about all I can um, all I can think of. You know, the uh, the West Coast here, maybe we're getting more uh, Midwestern people. And even though those states have been locked down pretty bad, maybe, you know, the Midwestern college kids are just, uh, you know, of a slightly different breed. I mean, sure, they'll let their friends out of uh, the police cars, um, but maybe they won't, uh, yeah, you know, maybe they don't want to twerk on, on top of the police car. Oh, and then again, you know, a lot of these spring breakers could be kids from Florida anyway. Uh, they're not necessarily the rest of the country. But uh, the... Um, the chaos in Miami uh, is understandably being blamed on out-of-state individuals, um, not, you know, Miami residents, uh, even though they don't really, you know, you don't have a whole lot of way of knowing that that's the case, um, but you can uh, assume so because that's, you know, that'll make people feel more comfortable um, with the situation. If they think that their own people um, are just, you know, are just tearing things apart, not paying their bar tab, um, uh, you know, smashing windows. That is a little more of an unsettling feeling than, hey, these invaders from the rest of the country have come down here uh, for a week and then they're going to go home. That's a much more comforting thought. But considering Florida is the fourth most populous state in the country, I would think that a pretty high percentage of our spring breakers are going to be uh, kids who actually live in this state. So you probably don't care that much, but I figured I'd give my two cents on the, uh, you know, the chaos that has erupted uh, down in Miami. So I hope you uh, didn't mind this, diver this diversion for one day too much.